or the visual axis, and patient is experiencing excessive irritation and the lesion interferes with any contact lenses like that. So next, uh, we have here the blepharitis. So this is the last um, non-emergency case that we will be talking about. So we have here the blepharitis, which are usually seen in the eyelashes, described as crusty or scaly, red thickened eyelid margins as seen in the photo with prominent blood vessels or with inspissated oil glands as seen on the second photo below. And um, symptoms for these types of patients is uh, usually itchiness, burning, foreign body sensation, tearing and crusting around the eyes upon awakening. So what should we do or what should we advise our patients? So treatment involves lead scrub with commercial eyelid scrub, or you can ask them to buy Johnson's Baby Shampoo and scrub it in their eyelids or mild shampoo twice, at least twice a day, and then advise them to do warm compress, also 10 to 15 minutes, two to three times a day. You may also give them artificial tears, and if it is moderately severe, you may give them antibiotics or you can just refer them to your ophthalmologist. In the involved eye, especially increased uh, intraocular pressure, which you can just gauge by palpating the involved eye and in comparison with the tip of your nose. So, if you notice that the eyeball is stone hard or hard, uh, it means that uh, that eye might have an increase in intraocular pressure. So, you have to refer that patient immediately mm -hmm. to your ophthalmologist for proper evaluation. So, next is we have the cataract. So next is um, cataract. We have here um, the most common cause is age-related, and it can also be usually due to um, it can also be congenital uh, and pre-senile. It can also be due to diabetes or if the patient had any trauma. Ah, the patient, no. um, uh, beginning cataract. And if the patient is taking any steroids or any other antipsychotic drugs or any drugs in particular that may cause cataract. Um, you can also see that in these patients. So in children, uh, we have to be very particular. We have to be very careful because if we see an opacity in a child or children, uh, sometimes it can be mistaken as a cataract. But it is very important to note that it can be a tumor, which is very important that we have to identify like uh, retinoblastoma in children. So it is important that if you see um, these types of patients, you ask them to seek consult with our uh, uh, with an ophthalmologist. So lastly, for our two uh, last systemic diseases, we have here the diabetic retinopathy and the hypertensive retinopathy. So for diabetic retinopathy, um, this usually occurs in people who have uncontrolled and long-standing diabetes. Uh, this causes progressive um, damage to the retina, which is the light sensitive part or lining in the back of the eye. So usually you may not have any symptoms at first, but uh, finding it early or consulting early can help you take steps to protect your vision. So you, what you can do is you advise your patient to control their blood sugar, cholesterol, and blood pressure, as well as getting a comprehensive dilated eye exam 
at least um, once a year. So next, uh, for the uh, next disease, which is our last, uh, we have the hypertensive retinopathy. So this is due to retinal vascular damage caused by um, hypertension, which can also cause blurring of vision in the eye as a sequelae. So signs usually develop late in the disease, especially if it is long-standing. So just like diabetic retinopathy, treating hypertensive retinopathy uh, retinopathy typically involves controlling high blood pressure through lifestyle changes, modification, and careful monitoring. So I guess um, that, that would be also what you do is to prevent visual impairment through primary eye care in the intervention. So that would be all for my topic. Thank you and good day. Thank you very much, Dr. Cabell. Again, I would like to remind everyone to kindly fill up the attendance sheet in the, at the end of the program and have evaluation forms for each speaker on the link provided in the chat box. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tesoro. So after, since we have already tackled about the non-emergency cases, let us now move on to our next speaker for the day. So he is a graduate of St. Louis University School of Medicine. Um, last 2016, he had his internship at Baguio General Hospital and Medical Center last 2017 and is also having res is also is having his residency at ITRMC Department of Ophthalmology and is currently a third year resident in our institution. So may now may I now call on Dr. Elijah Justin Daus to discuss about the emergency eye conditions and what to do first and eye care is self-care, home tips for keeping our eyes healthy. Dr. Daus, you may now proceed. Hello, good morning. Kita na ba yung slides? Yes. Okay, so good morning. I'm Dr. Elijah Daus and I will be presenting emergency eye conditions and what to do first. So these are uh, the emergency cases that I will be discussing to you this morning. So first is eyelid foreign body. So the causes of which are the following, uh, eyelashes, dry mucus, sodas, dirt, sand, cosmetics, metal particles, or glass shards. So uh, pwede itong makuha pag actually naglilinis kayo sa bahay or nasa labas, biglang may tumalsik na kung ano man. So signs of symptoms, you can feel pressure or discomfort in the eye, sensation that something is in your eye, eye pain, extreme tearing pain when you look at the light, excessive blinking and eye redness. So what to do in this kind of situations? You can remove the foreign body by inverting eyelid and wiping with cotton swab. I will be uh, showing a video later on. So next is you can immerse the side of your face with the affected eye in a container of water. So make sure that the water is clean. And while the eye is underwater, you can open and close the eye several times to flush out the object. So if you cannot remove it or the vision is affected, uh, you want to refer the patient or you can so seek consult. And if you have antibiotics, you can put plain antibiotics every four hours for seven days. Example is tobromycin. So this is a video showing how to overt the eyelash. Grasp the upper eyelashes between your thumb and forefinger. Place a wetened applicator on the surface of the eyelid at the top of the tarsal plate. Flip the eyelid up over the applicator. Remove the applicator as you hold the averted eyelid in place with your other hand. Examine the pretarsal sulcus for a foreign body. If you find one, remove it with a gentle rolling motion of the applicator. Remove your hand from the eyelid and tell the patient to look up. The eyelid will flip back to its normal position. So next one is conjunctival and corneal foreign body. The causes and certain symptoms is actually the same with the eyelid foreign body. Uh, the main difference is the location of the foreign body. So what can you do here? Uh, you can put first an aesthetic eye drops if available. Lidocaine or proparacaine. Yung lidocaine, 
is uh, mas matagal lang mag-effect compared dun sa mga commercially available na pang eye drops na anesthetic. So, if lidocaine, uh, pwede yung ipatak. We just have to wait for 10 to 15 minutes. So, we try to remove it with a cotton swab or flushing it with water just like we did gagawin sa eyelid foreign body. And we can apply plain antibiotics also. So, if you are, kung mas malakas ang loob natin, we can remove actually the corneal foreign body grossly. The foreign body, corneal foreign body, we, we remove it through a slit lamp, but we can remove it grossly. Um, pwede kayong gumawa ng improvised na lead speculum. If there is no lead speculum available, you can just use a clip. Ibibend mo lang dito sa end niya. So, just make sure na clean yung clip na gagamitin. Then, anesthetize yung mata. So, we use gauge 25 um, needle or mas maliit. So, uh, we, we just pick the uh, foreign body. So, make sure that the patient is cooperative. Kasi kung galaw ng galaw yan, pwedeng matusok yung mata. So, we can also use this technique yung uh, taas yung swipe ng foreign body. So, next is a uh, pulnear ulcer you can see a whitish opacity on the eye. So, at uh, patient at risk are the following. Actually, uh, contact lens we we wearers or people who use steroid eye drops. So, the causes, bacterial infection, viral, fungal. So, most common ito yung mga natroma, tapos nag- Self-medicate, hindi nila alam. May steroids pala yung eye drops na nilagay nila. So they are at risk. Most common din yung mga natamaan ng plant-based material, yung, lalo yung high, uh, rice husk, mga walis tambo. So you, you are prone to having a corneal ulcer. So what to do is, uh, of course, if nagpapatak ka ng steroid, you should stop it immediately. If you have a contact lens, you remove it. Then uh, for this kind of cases, we actually use uh, third generation fluoroquinolones, libofloxacin or moxifloxacin. But if this is not available, uh, mas maganda na magbigay pa din ng kahit ano, tobramycin, just to uh, have a coverage while the patient is being referred to at uh, the hospital. So we can give also atropine eye drops and artificial tears. So next one is acid al alkali burns. Uh, signs and symptoms of these are excessive tearing, blinking, severe pain, and reduced vision. So these are the examples of acids and alkalis. So what to do? Uh, First, you assess the scene safety and take necessary precautions to avoid additional exposure or contamination. Uh, especially ito pag you are a bystander, then you saw may sumabog na battery or may next spill. So uh, scene safety is priority first. Baka pwedeng madamay ka din. So the most important thing is, is immediate removal of the offending agent. We do copious irrigation of the affected eye for at least 30 minutes or two liters of irrigating solution. So uh, these are the techniques that we use. So pwedeng balutin yung ulo ng patient, ng towel, and then tilt their head sideways towards it. Kasi uh, pwedeng ma-contaminate yung isang mata if naka-flat yung head ng patient. So we use a kidney basin or any other na pang salok ng tubig. Then we manually open the eyelids or we can use yung improvised na pang lid na pang open. And, and we use irrigating solution. If there's no available clean water, distilled, or even tap water is pwede. Kasi ang pinaka-importante dito is we, can, we wash immediately the offending agent. So kung bata, kailangan nakaba nakabalot yan kasi magwawala yan. And then, yun, pag may, if the anesthetics is available, pwede tayong magbigay ng anesthesia. 
So we can also swipe the lower and the upper eyelids using the uh, cotton pledget kasi pwedeng may mga naiwan dyan na foreign body. So pwedeng nakahiga yung patient or pwedeng nakaupo. So the most important thing here is copious irrigation. Actually, you can irrigate up to 10 to 15 liters of water habang or habang hinihintay yung pag-transfer ng patient or on the way, pwede nag continuous na nag irrigate ka ng water. So next is corneal pen perforating injury or penetrating injury. So signs and symptoms are the following. So when to suspect a penetrating eye injury, uh, bleeding surrounding the eye, inside the eyeball or coming from the eyeball, obvious penetration of sharp nail or debris into the eyeball or eye socket, protruding objects from the globe or the eyeball, swelling or lacerations of the globe of the eyeball, protrusion of the globe of the eyeball from the eye socket, reduced vision and swelling of the eye area, and misshapen, misshapen or distorted parts of the eye from normal. So what to do? Uh, of course, uh, if we have eye shield, we immediately put the eye shield. Uh, do not rinse with water. Do not remove the object stuck in the eye, do not rub or apply pressure. Uh, that's why we do not recommend eye patching because pwedeng mag-apply mag ng pressure sa mata. And we avoid giving aspirin, ibuprofen, or other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So this one is the commercially available. Pwede nabibili to sa Mercury or drugstore. If it's not available, we can use uh, a cup, ito improvise, para lang matakpan yung mata. So we can just tape it like this. So how to keep your eyes healthy at home? So now that we are most, nasa work from home tayo, we are most likely exposed to the gadgets. So we have a computer vision syndrome na these are the symptoms that may cause if we are uh, exposed to the screen all, all day. So one thing that we can do is the ergonomics to uh, decrease the symptoms of CBS. So the screen should be unaffected by glare from sunlight or ceiling light. Your eyes should be level with the top of your computer screen and they should also be 20 to 30 inches away from the top of the screen. So take a break. We have the 2020 rule. So every 20 minutes that you're exposed to the screen or reading, uh, watching television, you take your eyes off of what you're doing and look at something 20 feet away for 20 seconds for the eye to have rest. And then for the brightness, so your monitor should not seem any brighter or darker than the lighting in your office or home. If you're struggling to read what's on your screen or your screen, uh, you need to change the setting and you can use anti-glare screen filters to reduce the amount of light reflected of your screen. So next, uh, we know that blinking lubricates the eye. So if you are focused on doing something, a reading at the computer, watching TV, the blinking time is actually reduced. So on average, 12 to 15 times. But if you are doing something or you're focusing on something, it reduces to four to five blinks. And then we are prone to having dry eye or CBS. And then for foods, Actually, there are many uh, that can help our eyes. Uh, yun, it, uh, these are listed here to help us uh, protect from macular degeneration and delaying the cataract. So sardines, mga rich in omega-3 fatty acids. So yung mga nandito, we, yung vitamins that are prescribed na yung binibili are actually nakukuha din natin sa uh, mga foods that are listed here. So next one is the proper uh, storage of and cleaning of your contact lenses. 
So always wash your hands before holding your contact lens. And the most important thing here is do not wash it with tap water. Say you, you will be prone to having a cantamoeba infection or you know, fungal infection, keratitis. And then don't sleep with your contact lenses. You, know, you will be prone to having infection. So also safety glasses. If you are gonna do some uh, yun, hammering, kung may gagawin ka that, you might prone to parang may magtumalsik sa mata. So welding helmet, if you will gonna do welding. Kasi if you're gonna use safety glasses lang for welding, pwedeng may mga lumusot pa din kasi sa mata. So UV, protect your eyes from UV rays. So if you're gonna go outside and you know that you're gonna be exposed to sunlight, uh, might as well use a shades or a cap. Yeah. Kasi if you are exposed to sunlight ng matagal or too long, you can uh, hasten your cataract formation or madadamage yung makila. So lastly is smoking. So actually smoking can also affect the eyes. So yun, uh, dry eyes, retina disease, uveitis, cataract, macular degeneration, and ROT. So that's all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Daos, for that very informative lecture. Again, reminding everyone to kindly fill up the evaluation form of the speaker on the link provided in the chat box. For any questions, you may type them below. So let us now move on to our last, but not the least, uh, the last speaker. Uh, she is a graduate of Doctor of Medicine at Our Lady of Fatima University 2017. She had her internship at Quirino Memorial Medical Center last 2018 and is currently our second year resident at the Department of Ophthalmology ITRMC. Her topic is all about eyeglasses, refraction and spectacles, eye drops, its uses, types, and how to administer. Let us all welcome Dr. Frances Abigail Tesoro. Dr. Tesoro. Hi, Doc. Thank you. For that introduction, let me just share my screen. Is my slide visible, Doc? Doc Paula? Yes, Doc Abby. You may now proceed. Okay, so good morning, everyone. I am Frances Abigail Tesoro, a second year ophthalmolo ophthalmology resident at ITRMC, and I will be discussing all about eyeglasses and eye drops. So these are the objectives of my report. And here, here is the outline of my report. So first part is the refraction. So refraction is the process to measure a patient's refractive error, determine the optical correction needed to focus the light rays from the distant and near objects onto the retina, and also to provide the patient with clear and comfortable vision. The first part of refraction is the objective refraction via retinoscopy. Retinoscopy is a clinical test used to determine the approximate nature and extent of a patient's refractive error, such as nearsightedness, 
farsightedness or astigmatism. Retinoscopy is performed primarily, primarily with a retinoscope, which is a handheld instrument consisting of a light source and a viewing component. So this is an example of a retinoscope. More commonly used nowadays is the automated refractometer. So ito na po siguro yung na, mas nakikita nyo na um, ginagamit namin sa clinics. After completing objective refraction comes the, object, the subjective refraction. This utilizes participation and reaction from the patient, patient, such as I can see better with the lens, with this lens than with that one, to obtain the refractive correction that gives the best visual acuity. It can be performed using a refractor or for a corrupter, such as the picture on the slide, or more commonly, it can be performed using trial lenses. So the next step is binocular balancing. This is the final step in refraction. This determines whether accommodation has been equally relaxed in both eyes. So after refraction, pinapatry na namin yung um, nakuha namin refraction to sa patient using trial lenses. So the next part of my report is eyeglasses. Eyeglasses are an easy way to correct your vision, but there are so many types of lenses, frames, and even lens coatings that we need to break to be familiar with. So the first part is for us to familiarize part of the parts of the eyeglasses. First one is the rim. The rim lend form and character to your eyeglasses. They also provide function by holding the lenses in place. Next of which is the end pieces. The end pieces are the small parts on the frame that extend outward and connect the lenses to the temples. Next part is the bridge. The bridge is the center of the frame that rests on your nose and joins the two rings together. Next part is the hinge. The hinge which is which sit between the end pieces and the temples allow you to close your glasses by folding the temples inward. Of course, the next part is the lenses. Lenses are the clear pieces of glass or plastic or other material held in place by the rims. The next part are the screws. The screws are the small metal fasteners near the hinges that connect the end pieces with the temples. So these are the screws. The last part, the next part is the nose pads. So the nose pads are the round plastic pieces under the bridge that sit on your nose that gives a more comfortable and secure fit to your glasses. Next part is the pad arms. The pad arms extend from the rims and hold the nose pads in place. They are adjustable to fit the natural shape of your face. Lastly are the temples. The temples are the long arms on the side of the frame that fit over your ears for a snug fit. So next are the types of eyeglasses. Generally, generally we can classify the eyeglasses into two categories, the single vision glasses and the multifocal glasses. Single vision glasses have an all-purpose lens designed to help you see either close, close up or far away. Multifocal glasses correct both near and distance vision, all in the same lens. So one portion is focused on the distance vision while the other portion is used for up-close activities such as reading. So under multifocal glasses, we have three, the bifocals or the or more commonly, yung tawag natin dito is yung um, doble vista, trifocals, and um, progressive lenses. So for single vision glasses, these glasses are prescribed for children or adults who have trouble seeing faraway objects, a condition known as myopia, or for people who have condition called hyperopia, meaning they have trouble seeing close objects. And these lenses are also take form of a reading glasses for people who have good distance vision but experience a loss of near vision which, with age known as presbyopia. The so-called readers or um, reading glasses can be purchased over the counter at the drugstores, bookstores, and other retail shops. Moving on to the multifocal glasses. First is the bifocal glasses. We have a correct um, bifocal classes have a correction in the bottom half of your reading, this one, and a different correction in the top half for seeing at a distance. However, it has a distinct non-discrete line, this one, 
and have circle shaped near vision lenses. These lenses are more commonly known as your double vista glasses. Next type of multifocal glasses is the trifocal lenses. Trifocal lenses has three different lens corrections. First one is for the near vision, intermediate vision, and distance vision in one pair of eyeglasses. So we in one glasses. The next, the last multifocal glasses is the progressive lenses. Progressive lenses function generally the same way as bifocals or trifocals, but they have a smooth transition instead of visible dividing lines between distance and near focal areas. So you can see in the picture, wala na yung parang line gaya ng double vista. So they, they have a sm smooth transition. Progressive lenses can cause more distortion than other types of lenses, making them difficult to wear for up for approximately 10% of the population. So this is where the distance vision is corrected, intermediate vision, and this is for the near vision. So next topic is the types of lens materials. So we have different type of lens materials. First one is the glass lenses. In the early days of vision correction, all Eyeglasses lenses were made of glass. Glass lenses offer exceptional optics. However, they are heavy and can break easily, potentially causing a serious eye injury or even loss of an eye. For these reasons, glass lenses are no longer widely used for eyeglasses. Next one is the plastic lenses. Plastic eyeglass lenses are about half the weight of glass lenses. They are relatively in inexpensive and have excellent optical qualities. They, al they also are more impact resistant than glass lenses. The next one is polycarbonate lenses. Since its introduction in 1970s, polycarbonate lenses have surged in popularity. They are lighter than regular plastic eyeglass lenses and significantly more impact resistant. Polycarbonate is a great lens material for children's eyeglasses, safety glasses, and even sports eyewear. Lastly, are high-index lenses. These lenses are significantly thinner and lighter than regular plastic lenses. That's why they are more commonly indicated for patients who are highly myopic. They have higher index of refraction and are available in an aspheric lens design. Moving on are the different kinds of protective coatings. First is the anti-reflective coatings, which can help us reduce glare. This makes for this makes our eyes easier easier for eye contact and prevents eye strain and improves our appearances. Coated lenses are also allow more light to pass through, thus improving your ability to see small patterns and letters. So this is an example. Next one is an ultraviolet violet or UV coating, which helps to protect your eyes from the sun's harmful radiation. Next one is the photochromatic lenses. It also offers UV protection and it can, the, these lenses automatically adjust from light exposure with darker tint in sunlight and a lighter tint indoors. So these lenses, photochromatic lenses, um, changes its shade um, depending on the, um, the light or the sunlight exposure. So we're done with the eyeglasses. For the last part of my report, is the eye drops. So some of the common eye drops you might encounter are these eye drops. Eye, eye drops. So first one is dilating, dilating drops. Uh, these are more commonly used during eye examination. We usually give them as one to two drops to the eye to be examined every 15 minutes for three doses. Next drops are meiotic eye drops or eye drops that can constrict our eyes. So these are commonly used, especially in glaucoma laser procedures, such as laser iridotomy or, or laser iridoplasty. And it can also be used as an anti-glaucoma medication in combination with other anti-glaucoma meds. Next eye, uh, eye drop is the lubricating eye drops. Uh, these are commonly used for dry eye syndrome, and we usually prescribe them in a four times a day basis or on as a needed basis. Next eye drop is Antibiotic drops. So we have different kinds of antibiotic eye drops. Um, these are usually used um, when we have um, eye infections or even 
in conjunctivitis, we can give them. So next um, drug is pressure-lowering drugs or anti-glaucoma medications. These are used for long-term treatment of glaucoma. Another type of um, eye drops is the anesthetic agents, commonly used prior to any eye procedures such as tonometry or any eye surgeries. So how do we instill eye drops? First is to read the doctor's instruction. The timing and dosage of your eye drops can make a big difference in your treatment. If there's a need to take more than one type of eye drop at the same time, wait for three to five minutes between the different kinds of medication. Next one is to get prepared. Always wash your hands before handling your eye drops or touching your eyes. Shake the drops vigorously before using them. Remove the cup from the eye drop medication, but do not touch the dropper tip. If you do, the dropper could pick up bacteria from your fingers and contaminate the bottle medication. So next step is to place the drops in your eyes. So to do this, tilt your head back slightly and look up. Use one hand to pull your lower, lower eyelid down away from the eye. This forms a pocket to catch the drop. Then hold the dropper tip directly over the eyelid pocket. Don't touch a gentle reminder. Don't touch the bottle to your eye or eyelid. This can give bacteria or other contaminants a chance to grow in your eye drops. Then squeeze the bottle gently and let the eye drop fall into the packet. Lastly, close your eye, eyes and don't blink. Apply gentle pressure to your tear ducts, tear ducts where the eyelid meets the nose. Hold the tear ducts closed for a minute or two before opening your eyes. This will give the drop time to be absorbed by the eye instead of draining into your nose. If any drops leaked out, use a tissue to wipe them from your closed eyelid. Then repeat steps three and four with the other eye if necessary. So this is just a short video um, lifted from the American Academy of Ophthalmology on how to properly instill an eye drop. <laughs> Eye drops contain medicines that are used to treat many eye diseases and conditions. Some are helpful for relieving eye discomfort. Putting drops in your eye may seem difficult at first, but it becomes easier with practice. To insert eye drops properly, follow these steps. Always wash your hands before putting in your eye drops. Remove the cap to the eye drop medication and do not touch the dropper tip. Tilt your head back slightly. With one hand, pull your lower eyelid away from the eye to form a pocket. You can do this by pulling the lower lid down with your index finger. With your other hand, hold the dropper tip directly over this eyelid pocket. Look up and let the eye drop fall into the pocket without touching the bottle to your eye or eyelid to prevent contamination of the bottle. Close your eyes and do not blink and apply pressure to the point where the lids meet the nose. Hold for two to three minutes or as long as your ophthalmologist prescribes. Before opening your eyes, and this is very important, wipe unabsorbed drops and tears from the closed lids with a the tissue, then open your eyes. If you need to take more than one kind of eye medication at the same time, wait three to five minutes before using the second drop. Remember, if your ophthalmologist prescribes eye drops or ointment for you, it's important to continue taking them exactly as your doctor tells you to. So thank you for listening. If you don't, if you have any question, you can type in at the chat box for us to answer it at the open forum. Thank you. Thank you very much, Afara Tesoro, for that very informative lecture. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat box below. So we can have our open forum. If you have questions, you may do so. Ask. So I think we have one question here. From, let me just check. From Sir Gary Garcia, which type of lens is scratch proof? Okay, I think this is for the Cara Tesoro. Okay, thank you, Doc. Um, so actually, glass lenses are scratch-proof, but nowadays we 
don't have glass lenses production anymore. They are already made to order. What we have nowadays are plastic and for the scratch proof, there, there is usually a special coating depending on the brand which you will which you can request to your optometrist. I hope that answers your question, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dakara. Yes. Okay, another one. What causes eye bag twitching and what medications can we use or how to prevent it? Okay. Anyone can want, want to answer? Hello, Doc Paula. I think I can uh, be able to answer that question, but so eye bag twitching is usually due to um, sometimes it can be due to so many things, uh, electrolyte imbalance and such. So um, sometimes we do prescribe vitamin B complex for our patients to avoid eye twitching also. But then if it is persistent, then that may uh, not only uh, need vitamin B complex and sometimes, you know, if the twitching is really worse and it causes pain to part of the, the face of the patient, then um, treatment such as botulinum toxin injection might be considered po. So I hope that answers a question of uh, Ma'am Erica Ramos po. Thank you so much, Dr. Maki. Hi, hello. If I may add to do the answer of Dr. Um, Maki. So eye twitching can also be caused by dry eye. So it's important that uh, we, can, we can recognize uh, drying of the eye and a simple medication such as lubricant can sometimes uh, solve the problem. That's all. Thank you, Dr. Shasan. I think we have another question here from Ma'am Marisa Singson. Uh, if we have to take more than one eye drops and then develop allergy, how will we know which eye drop is what we are allergic to? I think I can answer that question for Dr. Clara. So for Marisa Singson, uh, if you uh, don't know which eye drop you're allergic to, better to stop both eye drops and consult your ophthalmologist. Or you can try uh, one drop at a time, then observe for any allergic reactions. Thank you, Dr. Clara Tesor. So do we have any more questions? Oh, we have another one. So what are the, I think uh, this is already answered. So do we still have any more questions? We can still type in the chat box below. I think Dr. Paula, uh, I was able to scan through a question. Um, there is a question from Mr. Christian Ronquillo. He said, good day. How often do we need to check our intraocular pressure, especially to glaucoma suspect individuals? So anyone willing to answer that question of Mr. Ronquillo po? Hello, good morning. So uh, to answer your question in... So how often do we have to check for IOP? I think it's better to, um, if especially if we have a history of glaucoma, it's better for us to have a routine eye examination like um, screening, for example, for patients that you have a history, at least to get a baseline for your IOP. So if just for um, routine checkup, we can at least check for at least um, every six months if we don't have any problems so we can ask or consult our ophthalmologist but if you think that you have a history of of uh, glaucoma i think you have to have your eyes screened earlier so at least we have we can at least check or catch if we have an early sign of glaucoma so i uh, i hope i have answered your question thank you Uh, Dr. Paula, 
Actually, uh, uh, there is another question from uh, Marisa Singson. Uh, she is asking, if we have to take more than one eye drops and then develop allergy, how will we know which eye drop is what we are allergic to? I Anyone think I know? have answered that question already, Matthew. Oh, all right. Thank you, Dr. Ria. So we have another question here from Miss Christina Kalubayan. Is it true that if we have foreign body on our eyes, you can open your eyes in a pail with water? No, anyone can answer from the group. Thank you. Uh, hello po. Yes, you can open your eyes. At, uh, basta malinis po yung tubig. Na, kasi pwedeng the foreign body can be flushed po. If you submerge the eye affected, then open and close it. There is a chance na the foreign body will be flushed. Yes. Okay. Hello. In addition to that lang po, so... Um, for the foreign body, what we can do also aside from submerging it, uh, we can um, uh, do it with um, running water. So at least um, we can make sure that the eye, no, the foreign body will not go back to the eye but if we have submerged it in water. So I think um, it's also good if we try it with running water. And to add to that, Doctora, um, we're also watchful sometimes on the water basins that we are using when opening or flushing our eyes also. Since, uh, yun nga, emphasis ni Dr. Daus na talaga dapat malinis talaga yung source ng ating lalagyanan ng tubig. Kasi uh, what can happen is that some some uh, basin, some timba, or a pail of water, meron na silang um, sediments or what we call biofilms. So kung meron ng parang... Um, parang slime na namumuo na dun sa containers ninyo, that can even be a source of further infection. So we have to make sure talaga na malinis talaga yung containers and yes, running water is also another option po. Thank you. Okay, so I think we have another question here from Ma Mylene Guarin. So good morning po sa glaucoma. My late father had it and was diagnosed with close angle glaucoma. Is there a possibility that I can have it also? Um, hello, ma'am. So to answer your question, uh, for actually for glau glaucoma, it uh, can be hereditary. So I think it's better for you to have your eyes screened. So at least we can see if we have uh, baseline for your eyes, if your IOP or your optic nerve po is normal. So at least we can um, check it early. So it's better to have your eyes screened po. Thank you. So are there any more questions? So if there are no more questions, so, okay, I think there's one more. Uh, there's two more, okay. okay. Uh, we've all heard this before from Mom. Isabel. Hello, ma'am. So we've all heard this before, putting breast milk as home remedy or old wives' tale for sore eyes. Is this advisable? Thank you, Doc. Hello. Um, actually, um, this is a telltale of putting breast milk in a patient's eye or even a child's eye. It's, uh, we should not do that, no? Put, putting breast milk, because this can um, cause infection, further infection to the eye, because the ducts of the breast can be... Uh, full of um, germs or bacteria, so this can go to your eye. So it's better not to um, uh, put breast milk in your eye because that can do further harm to your eye. Thank you. So another one, I think, uh, from Mam Linda Guerrela. Good morning, Paul. For digital eye strain, it is okay to take any over-the-counter eye drops as needed, Paul. Thank you. Uh, yes, you can uh, use any over-the-counter drugs for digital eye strain. Pero we do not recommend yung mga hindi uh, DFA approved or yung mga 
uh, na nakita nyo lang sa TV or na advertise. So, we recommend yung mga uh, approved by the government. Uh, for example, high promilose or yung mga kung gusto nyo ng mas maganda, meron yung mga preservative free but uh, mas expensive po sila. Yun. But for digital eye strain, syempre, ang pinaka-important is to let your iris pop. Yun. Okay, thank you, Dr. Daos. So we have another question. Doc, just wondering, those who are using eyeglasses and contact lenses and those who have problems in their visions, well, how often do they visit for a specialist in a year po siguro? I think this is for Dr. Atasaro. Um, you uh, for uh, patients or persons who have uh, who are wearing eyeglasses or contact lenses. So, in a year, uh, you can visit your ophthalmologist annually po or every two years to check your um for us to recheck or um remeasure your refractive errors for us to um um. Um, for us to prescribe um, uh, newer eyeglasses for you to correct your refractive errors. Thank you, Doctora. Okay, are there any other questions? I think, Dr. Paula, there's a question also um, from Ma'am Michelle Buendia. Good morning, Paul. What causes refractive errors? Po? So I think uh, by physiology, I can cover some of that question. So... Our lens kasi has different parts. And um, sa lens natin kanina sa aking lecture, may nakakabit na fibers doon na malapit sa lens. So these are called zonules. And um, paghabang tumatanda rin tayo, those zonules kasi, especially when we get to, to that age of 40, medyo hindi na siya kesang tense. And also the quality of our lens, medyo lumalabo na rin because of collection of protein also. So as we age talagang medyo lumalabo yung lens natin at the same time yung zonules natin, hindi na ganun ka-firm para mag, uh, mag, uh, mag iba ng shape ng lente para mag-focus. So hmm. it can also cause refractive errors in the eye. But then some, some people are born with shorter eyeballs, some with longer eyeballs. That's why pag shorter eyeball, usually um, meron silang hyperopia they would need yung makakapal na lens yung para nagmamagnify. And some people naman are born with a long eyeball to which they have what we call myopia or nearsightedness. That's why they also need glasses. Sometimes, namamana po yun. So, kung inborn na medyo short yung eyeball shape mo or long, pwede po yun mamana rin po. So, it can cause refractive errors. So, I think other doctors can also clarify other sources of refractive errors din po in certain eye diseases din po. Okay, thank you, Dr. Maki. Okay, so I think uh, that wraps up our open forum. So if there are no more questions, so for the summary of today's session, uh, we have discussed the organizational structures, job descriptions, general outflow, along with the safety protocols. And we have also tackled basic eye history and examination recognition and management of common and emergency eye diseases and home eye care tips. We do hope that you have learned a lot from our first session and we do appreciate all your questions that you have asked during our session. With this, we would like to thank all our speakers, Dr. Richmond Chiasson, Dr. Maria Cristina Eduardo, Dr. Elijah Justin Daus, Dr. Tesoro, and to everyone who attended our first session of our Ophthalmic Support Staff Chorus 101. Again, I would like to remind everyone to please don't forget to fill up the attendance sheet provided below and the evaluation forms on our chat box. Lastly, before we end today's session, we are again inviting you to please attend our next session, which will be on November 20, 2021 at 9 a.m. So I think we'll be having um, short course here. So with that, thank you everyone and have a great weekend. Thank you. And thank you everyone. Hello Paula, picture taking. Ah, yes sir. Can everyone Can open their video?
Can we open your videos, your cameras for picture taking? Okay. Okay, for a smile. One, two, three. Okay, next slide. Smile po. One, two, three. Okay, now last slide. One, two, three. And I think we have another one. Yeah. One, two, three, smile. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for attending Thank our you. first session. So I hope you will have a great weekend. Uh, please don't forget to sign the attendance sheet and evaluation forms. Thank you. Thank you, po. Doc Thank Paula. You, po. Thank Ay, doc. you. Doc, yung training Ay. tool. Ah, yes, ma'am. Ah, yes, po. Well, ipopost na lang po, ma'am. Ah, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doc.